Alrighty, this will be the people news. Okay, this is part three. Alright, not attorney, not giving legal advice. Anything I say or do is just opinion and educational purposes only for everybody to not look straight forward, but always look around you, be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. Liberty, protect ourselves. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and proceed forward on this uh, man named Brett. <laughs> and, um, if you want uh, non-interruption and all that, uh, Legal Beagle, okay, B-E-A-G-L-E-S. Right. They sure do. And that's typically when the when they recognize that they've done something wrong, either they didn't um, make their own case very well or they actually did something wrong that would embarrass them or their agency. Yeah, those, those cameras go missing. What a shame. So, yeah, I would say, um, you know, don't try to teach them anything. Ask a few questions to try to get them locked into what, it, what their position is. Record the whole thing and just get it over with as quickly as possible. Take the ticket. Don't make a big deal out of it. You're going to deal with all of this paperwork in court. And so that's the next thing I would say is, um, is to go ahead and go to the court. Here I have just calling the court to find out about their um, hours and the address, but go as quickly as you can. Okay, so even we're going to go with that, right? Always keep in the mindset. You are investigating them. Okay? As they are investigating you, there is no law, no law saying that you cannot investigate them. So that's what you're doing. You're investigating them. And you're going to see if you can uh, see what type of crimes they've committed. <laughs> if you can do it that same day, great. If you don't have to be somewhere right then, turn around and go to the court that you'll have. He hands you this notice to appear or a promise of, to appear. And I would suggest going there. You want to go see the file. They're not going to have anything, but you want to go see the file. And typically, it's just going to be either empty or it'll be a digital copy of the citation that was issued. You're never going to find something that says uh, it's a primary pleadings. And the primary pleadings are to, to commence a criminal case or an indictment or an information. And the information has to be based on a sworn complaint. Sorry, a citation is not going to cut it. Even a sworn complaint is not going to cut it. The sworn complaint has to accompany the primary pleadings. Look, if you if you start a civil case, you go, you walk into the courtroom and you bring a controversy to the court. You're saying, hey, I need to invoke the aid of this court to help me adjudicate an issue here. I'm the plaintiff. I'm bringing a complaint. And when you present that paperwork, Whatever's on that paperwork is the subject matter. And if it matches with the court's statutorily conferred subject matter jurisdiction, then the court will have subject matter jurisdiction over that case, right? Well, That's in theory. Yeah. And so here in a criminal case, the way for a court to be vested with this subject matter jurisdiction is by having some paperwork, primary pleadings, indictment or information, and on that paperwork, the subject matter that's indicated matches that court's statutorily conferred subject matter jurisdiction. So if there's no paperwork, <laughs> there's nothing, there is there is no case. I'm sorry, I know they wanna pretend like there's a case. I mean, they've got a case number and everything, but they've got nothing to support that. There is no case. There's only the appearance of a case or the simulation of a case, I should probably say. Appearance is another special word that uh, typically means you show up, but you can also show up via paperwork. Uh, but yeah, they don't have a case. They're only acting like they have a case. Yeah, for, for far too long, we've sat back and just paid these minor fines and it's such a hassle to go down. Yeah, exactly. And we've just been trained and lulled into a sense of enslavement of such people. And, well, they said they have right. a case. Well, if you don't do it, they're going to see something. It's your liberty. And it's our own fault. Yep, I agree with you, Gary. It is. And, you know, not 
not maliciously or anything. It's not like we intended for this to happen, but by, by being lax and not stepping up and figuring out what's going on, we've left ourselves open essentially for this. So, yeah. Uh, so you go in there to the court clerk and people ask me all the time, well, can I just email them? Can I just call? I tried calling over there and she said that she didn't have anything. Try in another couple of weeks. No, don't call them. Don't email them. If you call, only call to just check and see what's their street address because you're, you're going there. Physically go there. And here's why. They're going to treat your, your request to, to look at the case as a records request if they can get away with that because a records request, they have X number of days to respond, you know, five days. So pay attention to this one very closely on this, okay? 10 days, 10 business days, something that, that statutorily is, is a maximum before they're officially considered criminals for not showing you those records. And so they'll go right up to the line. Typically, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I probably sound jaded, but no, they don't. They, they wait all the way till the last minute, usually, and then they'll tell you some kind of silly reason why, well, you didn't identify yourself well enough, so because of this, we can say that uh, you're not entitled to these records, or this contains confidential information, and whatever. They're going to say it's a, it relates to an ongoing criminal investigation, so you're going to have to get it through discovery. And even though there is no investigation, there's no case. There's no nothing, but if there were a case, that would be true. You do need to get it through discovery. But anyway, go down. When you physically go there, they have no excuses. There's no time. You're standing there. You ask to see some records. They just pull it out. You say, I want to inspect the, the court, the, the file. And somebody so you say, the file. Don't, don't give them the option to do it on their leisure. Go down there, demand it, see it, see them grab it. Yeah. And see it in front yeah. of them, and don't don't give them an, an option to alter anything or delay. Just go and see for yourself. In exactly. And the key word there is inspect. I'm here to inspect the records. Um, in most states, that is a special key word that means I'm going to look at them for free, and they're not going to charge you by pretend you're a code making... enforcer. Tell them, hey, I'm here to inspect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's not inspect in the sense that, that you're going to uh, see if their records are valid. It's not that kind of inspecting, but it is looking at the records as opposed to asking them to make you copies of the records. Now, sometimes if all they've got is electronic records and they can't turn their monitor around, they're behind this plexiglass screen, whatever. Okay, fine. So I don't care. Let them print it out and show it to me. You're not charging me for those, you know? Right. They want to charge per page for pretty much anything they can. But I didn't ask for copies. I just wanted to inspect. So that's free. It's always free. Like you said, these are our records. They work for us. Correct. So after she's pulled out the folder and set it up there on the counter, and you're looking at these records, you, I, I like to take a look and see how many are there. There's my, is it one page? Are we looking at four pages? What is this? And... You could even snap some shots with your screen, with your uh, cell phone if you want to. But you get that in, you, in front of you now. And once you're looking at it, then you, you smile, you thank her, you push it back over to her, and you ask her for a certified copy of it. Okay, now she doesn't have any excuses. She can't wait two weeks. She can't talk about how busy she is. You're right there. So you just stand there, you ask for a certified copy, and she's got to do it right now. There's no opportunity for any prosecutor or any other attorneys to get involved and try to decide if it's okay for you to look at these and whoops, there's, I got to cook the books first. There's nothing else. You're just right there and you're asking her to certify it. Very good point. So when you email, you are giving them a heads up to say, hey, somebody wants to take a look at it. You better hurry up and, and fudge and forge on this one first because he's already asking to see it. Don't give them that option. Don't even 
give him any heads up about anything. You just go in there when you're inspecting, then you push it back, ask for certified copy. They'll probably charge you a few bucks for that, a dollar or two per page. But now you've got something that is, as of this date and time, you can tell for sure there was no case. And it can't be altered by someone with a vested interest in the outcome of the case. <laughs> yeah, one would hope. <laughs> but because if they do... Yeah, if you get then, all the copies up on date on say July first, July fifth, the prosecutor can't come say, "Well, we meant to add this or that." No, it wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. Right, so so in a box. another reason that I say go there is you could just casually ask to see the magistrate while you're there, and they're always going to tell you, "Oh, magistrate's not available right now." Uh, the only thing we can do, if you want to see the judge, you have to enter a plea. And uh, if you say not guilty, then we'll set a date and you get to see the judge. That's their typical response. You've just done something. And they don't normally notice this, but what you've just done by walking into that courtroom, uh, the courthouse, and asking to see the magistrate, you have fulfilled your promise to appear. Uh -huh. Your citation said something about... You need to go within 10 days or it'll say honor before such and such a day. And you walked in there the same day you got that thing. And it says uh, you need to appear. Well, you did. You went in there. Magistrate wasn't there. There was nobody that was ready or willing to talk to you. In some cases, I've even had, had them tell me that uh, the court's not available to the public today. And that's just something else that you get to ding them for. Now, this this all begs the question, Brad. How many citations have you gotten? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know. 20? I don't know. And we're, we're that's a long list. Tickets or other things? Oh, yeah. Speeding, uh, all kinds of traffic stuff. I've had the registration thing. I've had the insurance thing. I've had the... Uh, probably more speedings than anything else, but I've had several of the others. And, and at one point they, when I showed my driver's license, I used to have a Texas driver's license. And when I show that, uh, the officer tells me, Oh, looks like that expired yesterday. And whoops, I didn't realize that. Guess what? They did a retroactive suspension on my, license so that they could call that ticket driving without a license oh yeah it's suspended <laughs> so yeah that then things got really hairy from there i had to deal with uh we used to have some legislation in texas that allowed them to after they called you driving while license invalid boy they could do a lot of bad things to you and it got uh there's a Alrighty, so this is just the way the people news. You got to go do some other things. Uh, we're going to do here for right now. This is going to be part three. Again, this is for the states that, specifically it's for Texas, but any state that's got criminal for driver's license infractions, uh, same process. So just look up your state. Uh, other states that's not criminal, that's going to be civil matter. All right, here we go. This is the way the people news. Till next time, bye, y'all.